Over the years, we have driven down the marginal cost of computing in the last 10 years in one particular algorithm by a million times. Well, as a result, it is now very logical. Nobody thinks twice. Taiwan is the home of our treasured partners. This is, in fact, where everything NVIDIA does begins. Our partners and ourselves take it to the world. Taiwan and our partnership has created the world's AI infrastructure. Every single time we speed up the application, the cost of computing goes down. This is that slide I was showing you earlier. A 100x speed up translates to 97, 96%, 98% savings. And so when we go from 100x speed up to 200x speed up to 1,000x speed up, the savings, the marginal cost of computing continues to fall. Well, of course, we believe that by reducing the cost of computing incredibly, the market developers, scientists, inventors will continue to discover new algorithms that consume more and more and more computing so that one day something happens, that a phase shift happens, that the marginal cost of computing is so low that a new way of using computers emerge. In fact, that's what we're seeing now. Over the years, we have driven down the marginal cost of computing in the last 10 years in one particular algorithm by a million times. Well, as a result, it is now very logical and very common sense to train large language models with all of the data on the internet. Nobody thinks twice. This idea that you could create a computer that could process so much data to write its own software, the emergence of artificial intelligence, was made possible because of this complete belief that if we made computing cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, somebody's going to find a great use. Well, today, CUDA has achieved the virtuous cycle. Install base is growing. Computing costs is coming down, which causes more developers to come up with more ideas, which drives more demand. And now we're on the, in the beginning of something very, very important. But before I show you that, I want to show you what is not possible, if not for the fact that we created CUDA, that we created the modern version of generative, the modern big bang of AI, generative AI, what I'm about to show you would not be possible. This is Earth 2. The idea that we would create a digital twin of the Earth, that we would go and simulate the Earth so that we could predict the future of our planet to better avert disasters or better understand the impact of climate change so that we can adapt better, so that we could change our habits now. This digital twin of Earth is probably one of the most ambitious projects that the world's ever undertaken, and we're taking step, large steps every single year, and I'll show you results every single year, but this year we made some great breakthroughs. Let's take a look. On Monday, the storm will veer north again and approach Taiwan. There are big uncertainties regarding its path. Different paths will have different levels of impact on Taiwan.
Core Diff 是 NVIDIA 的生成式 AI 模型，它在 WRF 数值模拟的基础上训练而成，能够以十二倍更高的解析度生成跟气模式，从二十五公里提高到两公里，这代表了区域天气预测的一个巨大飞跃。令人惊讶的是 ，Core Diff AI 比传统的物理模拟方法快一千倍，且能源效率高三千倍。在台湾的中央气象局是用这些模型来更精确的预测台风登陆点，但我们并不止步于此。下一个前沿是超本地预测，能精确到数十米，并考虑到城市基础设施的影响。Core Diff AI。还在使用像是 Palm 生成的高解析度数据进行训练。一个极高解析度的物理模型，用于模拟大气和海洋边界层。当与天气模拟风场结合一起时，它可以模拟建筑物周围的气流。当极强风汇聚的情况，我们预计能够预测像下冲这样的现象。当强风汇聚到街道层，会有可能造成损坏并影响行人。NVIDIA Air Two 是一个绝佳范例，它融合了人工智慧、物理模拟和观测数据，可以帮助国家和公司预见未来，并应对极端天气的影响。Someday in the near future, we will have continuous weather prediction at every at every square kilometer on the planet. You will always know what the climate's going to be. You will always know, and this will run continuously because we've trained the AI, and the AI requires so little energy. And so this is just an incredible achievement. I hope you you enjoyed it, and very importantly. 呃、uh, ，我的我的国语讲的标准吗<笑> ？The truth is that was a Jensen AI. That was not me. I I wrote I wrote it, but an AI Jensen AI had to say it. 我的国语不不够好。Let me talk about what's next. The next wave of AI is physical AI, AI that understands the laws of physics, AI that can work among us. And so they have to understand the world model, so that they understand how to interpret the world, how to perceive the world. They have to, of course, have excellent cognitive capabilities, so they can understand us. Understand what we asked and perform the tasks. In the future, robotics is a much more per pervasive idea. Of course, when I say robotics, there's a humanoid robotics that's usually the representation of that, but that's not at all true. Everything is going to be robotic. All of the factories will be robotic. The factories will orchestrate robots, and those robots will be building. Products that are robotic. Robots interacting with robots, building products that are robotic. Well, in order for us to do that, we need to make some breakthroughs. And let me show you the video. The era of robotics has arrived. One day, everything that moves will be autonomous. Researchers and companies around the world are developing robots powered by physical AI. Physical AIs are models that can understand instructions and autonomously perform complex tasks in the real world. Multimodal LLMs are breakthroughs that enable robots to learn, perceive, and understand the world around them, and plan how they'll act. And from human demonstrations. Robots can now learn the skills required to interact with the world 
using gross and fine motor skills. One of the integral technologies for advancing robotics is reinforcement learning. Just as LLMs need RLHF, or reinforcement learning from human feedback, to learn particular skills, generative physical AI can learn skills using reinforcement learning from physics feedback in a simulated world. These simulation environments are where robots learn to make decisions by performing actions in a virtual world that obeys the laws of physics. In these robot gyms, a robot can learn to perform complex and dynamic tasks safely and quickly, refining their skills through millions of acts of trial and error. We built NVIDIA Omniverse as the operating system where physical AIs can be created. Omniverse is a development platform for virtual world simulation, combining real-time, physically-based rendering, physics simulation, and generative AI technologies. In Omniverse, robots can learn how to be robots. They learn how to autonomously manipulate objects with precision, such as grasping and handling objects, or navigate environments autonomously, finding optimal paths while avoiding obstacles and hazards. Learning in Omniverse minimizes the sim to real gap and maximizes the transfer of learned behavior. Building robots with generative physical AI requires three computers, NVIDIA AI supercomputers to train the models. NVIDIA Jetson Orin and next generation Jetson Thor robotic supercomputer to run the models. And NVIDIA Omniverse, where robots can learn and refine their skills in simulated worlds. We build the platforms, acceleration libraries, and AI models needed by developers and companies, and allow them to use any or all of the stacks that suit them best. The next wave of AI is here. Robotics, powered by physical AI, will revolutionize industries. Now let's talk about factories. Factories has a completely different ecosystem. And Foxconn is building some of the world's most advanced factories. Their ecosystem, again, edge computers and robotics, software for designing the factories, the workflows, programming the robots, and of course, PLC computers that orchestrate uh, the digital factories and the AI factories. We have SDKs uh, that are connected into each one of these ecosystems as well. This is happening all over Taiwan. Foxconn has built, is building digital twins of their factories. Delta is building digital twins of their factories. By the way, half is real, half is digital, half is omniverse. Pegatron is building digital twins of their robotic factories. Wistron is building digital twins of their robotic factories. And this is really cool. This is a video of Foxconn's new factory. Let's take a look. And that's the factory, the robots inside, and of course, all the products are going to be robotics. So there are two very high volume robotics products. One, of course, is the self driving car, or cars that have a great deal of autonomous capability. NVIDIA, again, builds the entire stack. Next year, we're going to go to production with the Mercedes fleet, and after that, in 2026, the JLR fleet. Uh, we offer the full stack to the world. However, you're welcome to take whichever parts, uh, which la whichever layer of our stack, just as the entire, st the entire uh, uh, drive stack is open. The next high volume robotics product that's going to be manufactured by robotic factories with robots inside will likely be humanoid robots. And this has great progress in recent years in both the cognitive capability because of foundation models and also the world understanding capability that we're in the process of developing. I'm really excited about this area because obviously the easiest robot to adapt into the world are humanoid robots because we built the world for us. We also have the vast, the most amount of data to train these robots than other types of robots because we have the same uh, physique. And so the amount of training data we can provide through demonstration capabilities and video capabilities is going to be really great. And so we're going to see a lot of progress in this area. Well, uh, I think we have um, 
some robots that we'd like to uh, welcome. Here we go. About my size. And we have, we have some friends to join us. So the future, the future of robot, robotics is here, the next wave of AI. And, and of course, you know, Taiwan builds computers with keyboards. You build computers for your pocket. You build computers for data centers in the cloud. In the future, you're going to build computers that walk and computers that roll, you know, around. And um, so these are all just computers. And as, as it turns out, uh, the technology is very similar to the technology of building uh, all of the other computers that you already build today. So this is going to be uh, a really extraordinary uh, journey for us. Well, uh, I want to thank, I want to, <laughs> I want to thank, I want to, I have, I have, I've made one last video if you don't mind. Uh, something that that uh, 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 we we really enjoyed making, um, and if you let's run it. Taiwan, 帮助我们实现了一个愿景。在这条漫长的路上，无数的伙伴支持着我们，从加速运算、电脑绘图。科学研究到人工智慧的高峰，每一个晶片，每一台电脑，都描写着你们辛勤工作和追求完美的故事。台湾是无名的英雄，确实世界的支柱。一起，我们推动了产业的复兴，辛勤的耕耘，让我们能够踏入占星运算的领域。其中，我们制作的电脑会转化成新型的工厂，制造珍贵无比的人工智慧。亲爱的伙伴们，你们是 AI 产业革新的后盾。无论面对多大的风浪，你始终稳如磐石。科技的卓越、勤奋与齐心合力的精神。是你的超能力。没有你，我们的愿景只是一个无法实现的梦想。与你同行，我们勇往直前，创造智慧与便利的生活，对抗疾病和自然灾害，让我们的世界变得更美好。谢谢你，台湾。让我们继续为这段 AI 创新之旅打造一个成功和繁荣的产业。<音>